Welcome to Three Dad Bods, the nexus of entertainment and news. Well, not exactly your first stop, but no doubt you will laugh, you will cry, but you will be entertained. Welcome everybody to another edition of Three Dad Bods with Brent, Carl, and well, well Carl. Yeah, I think we're, we're, we're most of the time we're going to be two dad bods, but uh, I mean, we'll get Sean on occasionally. We'll also have some guests occasionally too, so um, kind of a little different format. But uh, we've been on a little hiatus, uh, so our audience understands. We just keep kind of taking a break. We did this, what, Brent, 10 months straight? So quite a long time. What are you looking at? Sorry, I was, I was doing my, my, my Biden speech looks there because uh, I heard no, it's more like popular there. I heard, I heard this is normal. I've, I've been traveling a lot, so I... <laughs> Uh, just make sure you, uh, you find a bathroom before, uh, Jill has to escort you to, uh, the changing room. If you will. It's I, Mr. President, <laughs> Mr. President, the Russians are attacking. What should we do? Yeah, yeah exactly. That's my fear too. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, no. Uh, when, then we'll jump into that in a bit, but, um, no, I, I, I'm good, man. That, you know, it's been a long time. Um, we actually, no. we actually went over a year. We, we, we went through a, yeah. a year there and, you know, we got busy and, and a bunch of stuff came up and I know with your work, it's taken a lot of your time and everything like that. So that, I mean, that's a good thing, you know, it's, it's not a bad thing at all. So, but it's good to be back with our listener. How you doing mm -hmm. listener? Um, <laughs> we'll work know, on that. We'll Hopefully, you know, we'll get back in a sling of things here, but I, I wanted to share something. Um, we're, we're at 4th of July. Um, it happened this last Thursday here, um, incredibly hot across a lot of the country and especially here and stuff, but we were, we were driving down to Franklin, Tennessee. Um, they got a little kind of festival that goes on. It's. Franklin's kind of like a small town and a large town. You've got a square that you go through and all these vendors set up. And so it's like a, a small town kind of carnival, you know, where you get out and visit and eat some good food and stuff like that. But on the way down, um, driving on the interstate and up ahead, I see a caravan of probably like eight police cars in the far left lane, all with their lights on. Oh, wow. All driving in single file line. And so, you know, it's getting closer and closer. And you know, the, the laws state, you know, when you see flashing lights, you pull over and stuff like that, but they're only going, actually they're going a little bit below freeway speeds. Um, so it's kind of freaking everybody out and everybody's not quite sure what's going on. And so like, I start to pass one and pass another and, and pass another and like, man, what, you know, I'm starting to get a little agitated. I'm like, they, they can't be driving like this the whole way. And, and they, they all say Lawrence County on it, mm -hmm. Lawrence County Sheriff's Department, which from where we are, it's probably about 80 miles. Wow. So they're way out of their um, territory. Didn't they? Right. <laughs> there. Yeah. So, so as you get closer to the front, I then see a first and I'm like, oh, Oops. a hoose, yeah. like a dead person in the back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And so that, now my attitude is, is changing to, to more of the one that's a sorrowful. Um, right. uh, feel and, and as we begin to head, as we're, we're heading south, but we, we then suddenly go under, well, we come up to an overpass and on the overpass, I see a bunch of police cars, a bunch of fire department and gentlemen standing outside saluting. And now I know it's a fallen officer. Man. And so, um, my wife, uh, Tracy, she quickly Googled, you know, fallen at officer Lawrence County. And it, yeah, it was an officer that was involved. Uh, he was in a chase, I believe, um, was a motorcycle policeman and wrecked. And so up, up in Nashville, we have, uh, Vandy hospital, which has a trauma unit to much like the university of Utah for those in Salt Lake city, I'm sure other cities around you all have your main hospital and stuff, but that's where that is. And he had passed away earlier that year. Um, so again, now having 
an experience with a good friend of ours who was a fallen officer now having visions and stuff. And, and this happening on the 4th of July also kind of has a little sentimental meaning to it for a, you know, yeah. a man who gave his life for the protection of, of others. Um, yeah. and then as we go through each overpass, the same scene, several police officers, several firemen out there, all saluting, standing in solace. Um, some other overpasses had people standing to the side of them and stuff. And so I just, you know, in, in a world, uh, in a media situation where they always try and turn us against each other, where they always try and turn us against, you know, especially the police who, in my opinion, have one of the most difficult jobs day in and day out, constantly being watched with every single move that you make, having to make last second life threatening decisions on a whim, not knowing what you're getting into each and every day, not knowing if you're going to come home each and every day and to those families of officers and those officers who are, are have fallen. So I, I just want to say thank you, you know, for the mm -hmm. service that you guys provide each and every day, because it is an incredibly difficult job. It's, it's, it's blistering heat is ice cold conditions. It's rain, it's snow. Um, you know, yes, you, you see good opportunities, but you also see a lot of the filth and the trash that is speckled throughout our society today. And, um, you know, when anytime I, I see a, a fallen officer, I always take a couple of steps backwards to really give thanks and, and gratitude for all that they do each and every day. Man, that's cool. Yeah. In fact, the, the other thing too, people don't understand, I mean, that job would be difficult too. And in, in a lot of other ways, I mean, you have to wear a uniform all day, which most of us get upset if we have to wear a tie. Um, uh, I mean, you look at their office desk, it's a cramped cop car, that uh, police car that, uh, you know, I, I, have you looked inside one of those things? I mean, yeah, they've got some yeah. cool stuff, but I mean, look how cramped it is in there and they got to, you know, and then of course, every time they drive somewhere, go to any type of stop i mean they're always putting their life in their i mean their life's in danger i mean most of you know i mean if you didn't if you did odds let's say 99 percent of the stops are safe stops but that one percent that that one guy just takes one and uh and you're having a parade well you're having a solemn um drive through where everybody's celebrating your life but uh family the family i mean for all what we do and the, and, and, and how much we respect these officers, the problem is the family's left with a missing father, uh, a missing husband. Um, I mean, the, the son grows up without a dad. I mean, we look at Mark's situation. Um, when did, when Mark died, how old was his, uh, son? Six months. Six months. Six months. Six, yeah. six months. Six months. He's never known his dad in person. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's a travesty. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's some cases where police officers need to clean their act up too, but the reality is that those guys do a tough job and, um, you know, that's why maybe sometimes I, um, tend to lean towards the police officer first before I, you know, kind of lean the other direction just because of Mark and some of the other stories I've heard, but. Um, those guys do a real, real, real rough job. The rest of us would be, uh, it'd be difficult for us. I know I couldn't do it. Yeah. Someone stole Cleeky from the Seven Eleven. I'd make it like 10 stops and be like, yeah, hey, keep it, man. I'll pay for it. That's not In fact, I'm going to buy a dozen myself. Get me in Twinkies now, Brett. I, I noticed that the other day. I was like, what, what happened um, to Twinkies? We actually bottle. had a fried Twinkie last night. I ain't gonna they lie. Did? Where'd yeah. you get? There's a place here. It's called Corey's Dogs. And they have, they probably have 150 different styles of hot dogs. It's incredible. They have this big board you go into, and they have it divided by regions. And so, like, Northeast, North Southeast, South South Midwest, West. Um, How the uh, hell do Europe. they know? how we like our hot dogs out here in the West. Dude, and it's great. Like they, and they have like 
a popular hot dog for each region. You know, they have they have right. chili and cheese. They have they have Chicago dogs. They, I, I mean, it's it's a fantastic place. It's Coors dogs, but when we go there, we don't ever get we don't ever get the hot dog. We get the dit cheese deep fried. Oh wow, it's so, so good. incredible. You break it off that corn dog covering and then <laughs> the melted cheese. Yeah. You're tight. Good corn dog, man. Good corn oh, dog. It's the best. Dude, corn meal is absolutely incredible. It's fresh. It's it's done right there in front of you. But they they had a special of fried Twinkies also, which is a southern thing. They have fried Twinkies. There. We have fried Oreos. We have bologna sandwiches. And when oh, I talk wow. about bologna sandwiches, it's not like the B O L O G N A Ostermeyer Wiener stuff. It is thick. Like that sounds it, good. It, so they fry there. everything there. Is that is that kind of the oh, thing? It's a salad, man. Everything's be fried in the salad. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of food, uh, this is for the fourth. Uh, Eric was in town, and so we were trying to figure uh, something to do. This is uh, July fourth, so the, the the evening. We're like, I didn't want to barbecue this year because i'm just barbecue all the time whenever they're there and so we're like all right well everybody's got a job so let's go grab something fun to eat and so we went to this local barbecue joint called the uh holy grill of course it's called holy grill <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. well i mean it's a pleasant grove barbecue spot and it's a lot so they're local so i wanted to support them uh, we got there and the first thing the lady says, they're out of pulled pork. And I'm like, oh, that's not a good sign. And then that was a popular item. Yeah. Then the lady's like, well, we had someone, I mean, the place is empty right now. There's probably like one family there besides us at that point. It was five o'clock. And, uh, we said, well, okay. And so we ordered and, uh, we sat down and then all of a sudden, like two or three huge uh suburban families arrive uh, moment suburban families are two or three young couples with 20 kids each uh walk into walk in the door and they're all in swimsuits because they're just at the local swimming place and of course you smell chlorine as they walk in the door yeah and then mass confusion i mean you hear i mean it is the loudest damn restaurant i've ever heard at that point i mean it was nice and peaceful everybody's loving it before that then all of a sudden and you know, kids are hanging off channel ears, and I'm just like, oh gosh. And we had ordered separate, so and I started telling the boys. I said, um, expect a long wait. And so, sure enough, um, it took over an hour before we got our food. Oh yeah, oh my god. god, yeah. I, here's here's the big thing though. I mean, they, I, I mean, I can understand the lack of service, but the food was average and, yeah and eric had been at uh joe's in kansas city and he'd been you know when his college career he's been at some southern colleges and he's had barbecue real barbecue yeah. and i i am sorry but utah's barbecue scene is dismal um i have not been impressed um since i was back in texas uh brent what's your opinion and on that because you you've been in both places i mean Tennessee's not known as it. Well, I don't know. Tennessee does have a good reputation as a barbecue. We got barbecue. Uh, all yeah, right. That one barbecue. place you yeah. took us. Yeah. yeah, that was really good. Yeah. But uh, what's your opinion on that? I mean, as far as barbecue is concerned, why do you think Utah is lax so far behind? Well, because you don't have the traditions that you have in, in barbecue like you have in the South. I mean, Southern barbecue, Southern barbecue, there's nothing like it. Now, I will say, though, like you mentioned with this place, Barbecue's hit and miss. It's either really mm -hmm. good or it's really bad. There's no middle ground at all. For me, mm -hmm. it's got to be moist. You know, I was gonna say, is it the sauces or is it the quality of the meat? Well, yeah. it's a combination of three things. It's a combination of the quality of meat. It's a combination of how you prepare it, and then mm -hmm. it's a combination of a sauce that you use. And there's several different types. You got a, a Tennessee. Um, smoky sauce, which is primarily smoky. You've got Carolina, which is more of a yellow, tangy, mustardy yeah. sauce. You've got Texas, which is a deep red, but it's spicy. It's got some heat into it. And so it, 
you know, in different regions, different areas. And then you got Memphis, which is kind of a combination of Carolina and Texas, where you've got some of that mustardy along with the heat that comes inside of it. So different areas, different regions, the way people grew up, you know, everybody in the South thinks that they have their own barbecue and, you know, to their taste, I, I can't disagree with them. But again, it's like, I, I've been into some spots where they've always had good barbecue and then I've gotten a plate and it's just like, it's like yeah. a boot. And I, I don't yeah. like that. I, I, I gotta have, I can't handle dry food like that. Um, my well, favorite that, here. Yeah. But, well, I was going to say the way that I, I gauge good barbecue is how their banana pudding is. You know, and that's how I was going to mention next the sides. Um, yeah. Cause I figured yeah, I maybe there was it. some relief. I yeah. ordered the potato salad. And it tasted like the crap you'd get at Kroger's, you know? And I'm thinking, yeah. I mean, what's going to set you apart as a barbecue place? Now, luckily for this company, there's only one other barbecue place in Utah County called Bam Bam's. That's actually pretty cool. Um, they're out in Provo, but it's too far away. I, I didn't <laughs> want to drive that far to go get Bam Bam's, but they're the, well, I guess that guy had done his mission out and, Georgia or Florida or someplace like that. But, uh, when I was in Florida, man, uh, my brother took me, well, Bucky's, Bucky's brisket Bucky's sandwich like yeah, is better good. than, there's better than anything in Utah. That's, that's well, and, scary. And when you look at that brisket as this laying out there, before they chop it up, you look at it, it's glistening, like oh, yeah. super moist. Cool. And when yeah. they break that nice, it just falls apart. It, it comes undone. And, and that's. To me, that that's a good barbecue right there. It's but like like you mentioned too, barbecue isn't just the meat; it's also what you have it accompanied. It's it's your your musicians that are accompanying <laughs> the star. You know, you gotta oh, have yeah. a good banana pudding. If you like potato salad, I hate it, can't stand it, but you gotta have a good potato salad oh, out here. Grits and the place that we go to, at least they've got a a um a jalapeno grit. It's got a kick into it. It's a cheesy Ooh, jalapeno grit. That sounds so good. It's like, oh, because I had lobster grits. I can't stand. I, I, can't I had that. lobster grits in Charleston, and there you go. Amazing. Man. They were amazing. <laughs> I mean, I no one in Utah has had grits until you've been to the South. I mean, they they know how to make grits. Um, yeah, people are going what? Everywhere. Grits, potatoes. Right? Like, no, no, oh, not no. at all. Uh, not not <laughs> one bit. So wow. that, okay. So that brings me to a question. Uh, what did you, I mean, tell me what a Tennessee 4th of July is like, um, compared to what we do here in Utah. I mean, it looked like well, there was, it was like Beirut going off, uh, yeah. on the floor. It yeah, has one of the largest festivals in, in America. Um, uh -huh. yeah, they, they had, so downtown had their big celebration over 300,000 people downtown. Um, I was not one of those, but. <laughs> So we went just north of downtown, not far away from where I work. And I had found a place. First of all, let me start by saying North Nashville is a very rough place. Oh, is it? I didn't know that. Okay. It is, it is an incredibly violent and rough place. With that being said, however, and I'll, I'll, I'll get to why I bring that up here in a moment. But so. A few weeks ago, I was, I was at work, I was going to get some lunch and I found an open field and on the top of the field was a wooden structure. And so I decided to go check it out because from there you're up, you're elevated and you could see all of downtown. It's incredible. It's beautiful. You can mm -hmm. see as far west, you can see as far as it, it's elevated up where there's no hills in front of you and you have a great beach. So that's where we went. Um. And we took my, my wife's cousin is in town. We took her. And when we got there, I could see that the gate was closed, which is never, it's never, ever closed, but it wasn't locked. And there were a couple of cars that were behind me that were pulling in too. So I kicked the gate open and so on up and we get up to the top up there and there's three police cars up there. Oh, geez. So I parked and I went on over to them and I'm like, Hey, is it? cool if we you know watch the fireworks from here and and the officer was a really nice guy really cool guy he, he says well we called the owner of the property and they said we could come on up so i mean i guess it's all right it's no big deal and i looked at him and i said well if you don't tell i won't tell so uh -huh. we started watching the fireworks and we were probably about an hour before the main fireworks show began 
Um, so you could see er little different parks and stuff doing their shows and stuff like that. And as time went on, there were more and more people. There probably ended up being about 300 people where we were. It started with us. <laughs> and, we and then it was like 300 people were up there all watching from this butte. And then the, the downtown show began and it, it was, I'm going to, I'll say it was pretty incredible. It was amazing. It, it was, you know, they're shooting them way up in the air, just tons of stuff. But they also had a drone show. Um, which we couldn't see from where we were, but my boy was downtown. And if you Google or look on, you know, X or Facebook, I'm sure you can see Nashville's fireworks show. And you Nashville, can see the yeah. drone show that went up where they had like these drones in, in shapes of like boats and, you know. Um, oh, that's cool. Like, I, I mean, it was incredible. But then they had fireworks that shot out from the drones. Oh, which wow. Was very incredible very amazing show that they had put together and, and kudos to um the city of nashville and davis county for what they put together but as we're watching these these fireworks displays off to the west of us you hear it. and i'm like all oh, no. fireworks and and um and as as they were going along then you'd hear it again you know like, oh, oh man <laughs> I'm like, that's not fireworks. Those are gunshots. You know, yeah, this is gun, this is gunshots. Don't sound like you hear in the movies. They, it just sounds like a. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the, I bet there was at least a hundred and fifty gunshots that that went off. Oh and my gosh! Like some of the was... people there. Oh, dude, it, it was like, like one one of the people there. They're like. North Nashville. <laughs> he, he, he called. He stole someone's Colt thirty-eight, right? Man, but but and, and most of them were like you know I'm, I'm guessing they were probably firing into the river. That's my guess. I don't know. I hope they took one hundred and fifty shots to get somebody there. Terrible aim. No offense, but so, I mean, uh, but one of the times they shot, you could hear like two, but I'm like, oh my god, what's oh, going it's time on? Time to here, go, Tracy. <laughs> yeah, it was time to go. <laughs> but um, no, great, great fireworks show. Um, Nashville does, does a very good. I I know uh, the kittens there had a bit of excitement. Oh yeah, little... yeah. I had uh, someone that uh, got hit by a stray. Uh, I remember only oh, was a kid in our neighborhood, uh, Justin, Justin Bo. Bo. Yeah, what happened with that? He got hit by a stray firework too, right? Uh, a lot of money. You know, at the shows that I, I will say this, I've been to stadium of fire once and I've been to the ones that were the, the kind of the coolest though. It was kind of funny. These small towns, small town firework shows are kind of cool. Well, I, uh, parents lived up in Malad, Idaho. Um, we went up there when the kids were really young. I think, uh, Mindy or Tyler cried through the entire damn show. But, uh, they get, you know, they go to the local high school, you're out by the football field, they start popping them up in the air and, uh, you're right, literally right underneath them. And you, you actually, yes. you look up and all of a sudden this black stuff is coming down and you hit it, it starts hitting you and you're like, what the hell is that? It's not snow. Oh yeah. It's, it's, uh, some of it can be quite hot actually. Uh, okay. sometimes you can get burned. So we're sitting there one year, we're watching, you know, it was a great show. And then all of a sudden, one of the shows go off the wrong direction and right over some houses in the local neighborhood, blow up real low altitude wise and scatter on this guy's roof. And all of a sudden the roof goes, then everybody's like, hey, what's going on? And then you hear the, the, the volunteer fire department gets into action, runs right over there puts it out like within two minutes and everybody's like cheering. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, and then the, I mean, I'll tell you small towns, small towns have some pretty cool fourth July traditions. Like they, I, I agree hundred percent that the, the other one that really made me laugh was that morning of the fourth, I wake up and at that time they were building a new, their house that they were they put in, um, my dad literally built a house. Uh, from scratch, um, he didn't know what the hell he was doing before it, but, uh, got one of those Sutherland house packages and then started building a house on a four acre lot. But, uh, while they were doing that, they were living in a old hotel in downtown Moad, which isn't a big town. 
And uh, we were staying there with him that night. And then all of a sudden that morning, all of a sudden there's a lot of noise. I'm like, what the heck's going on? He's like, oh, that's the uh, the local parade. But they have a uh, bed contest before. I'm like, a bed contest? What the hell is that? He said, well, they get these old beds and they decorate them and they put them on wheels. And it's a bed race down Main Street. I'm like, are you freaking kidding? And so, yeah, I'm looking out the window and and. There's these idiots running down the road as fast as these teen, mostly teenagers trying to, you know, like awesome. the old soapbox. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was pretty cool. And there were some creative beds, you know, patriotic beds. And then of course they do the, uh, the real parade where they throw the candy to the kids. And oh yeah, so that, that I, small town, they didn't know how to do the folder. I'll say that. I, I encourage anybody go, go visit a small town, not, not only during the fourth, but you know, like I know, a, North there of Salt Lake and Brigham City, they have peach days that oh, goes yeah. on. Though. And yep. I love small town festivals. You know, it, like we, we've gone down to Franklin and, you know, you get like pie eating contests and, and you have homemade food that's out. It's some of the best food you're ever going to find. It's absolutely amazing. When you got Aunt Martha's butter crisp recipe or whatever she's putting out there, you know, yeah. it, but that small hometown feel. It's fun. This is as you know, you got you got your bed racing going down Main Street yeah. and stuff. You got your parade crew. It's just um to me it's it's like a, a great patriotic portion of what real America is, you know, away from the mumble and jumble of life. Well the big deal was the big baseball <laughs> game too during the middle of the day there. So from the uh, wow. high school kids and they play the former um uh, high school and, and oh, alumni. Right? Yeah, yeah, that was always awkward, it was always a big deal. There were stakes, you know. They were they were batting each other, and yeah, it got kind of heated too. So, uh, but it was fun, you know. They had a big barbecue out in the park, and then then it rolled into the fireworks later that night. So, um, I'll tell you, man, if uh, small towns, you know, it might be boring the rest of the year. Maybe the Mavericks the greatest place in the world to go hang out at, but uh, the but they do, they do the holidays, right? And so everybody comes home from, you know, whatever city they're living in at that time to go see mom and dad are still living in the little town and it's pretty cool. So, I mean, yeah. you know, if, if there's an opportunity someday to live in a small town and you can actually make it work for you, it's not a bad lifestyle. I think. Well, I would also just, you know, you can get on Google and just, you know, pick a small town and, and, you know, look for events. And even during the, the regular calendar year, a lot of them have little festivals and, and events and stuff that go on. And, um, I, I think more importantly with that, you know, you're supporting local people who are still feeling the effects of, of a bite of a, sorry, of an economy that is incredibly horrible. Um, of, of, you know, people who suffered through COVID and had to be shut down and, and you're supporting and you're giving back to a lot of them, local struggling companies, because without our local small businesses, we're not, we're, that, that's what's wrong with our economy today. And we've got to do everything we can to help build them up to, mm -hmm. uh, to fight yeah. through this drug that we're in right now. Well, you brought it up and, uh, and it is something that's happened over the last week or two, um, I watched, well, I didn't watch the actual debate live. I watched a lot of it later, um, cause it was so entertaining. Uh, I, I don't think Trump won that debate as much as Biden completely. I mean, just the, the biggest self-destruct in American history in a debate. Yeah. I, I yeah. never have seen something I, that terrible. I, I think that actually, I think a few minutes in, I think Trump realized he really didn't need to talk that much. No, that's going to just, just, we're yeah, just going to let this unravel, you know? And, and I know that, well, then a lot of the com the flip, the spin is, are you going to vote for the liar or are you going to vote for someone who cares about his country? And let me say this. First of all, when the lie meters came out, Biden actually told more lies than something. I hate to disappoint people on that. Trump had his very best fair share of them, but Biden was in there. So if you're both going against the liar meter, there's your answer on that. But I, I think the other thing too is I'm not a Biden fan, not one bit. Um, oh. I would, I would vote a chair over, over Biden, but 
That's even when he was very... coherent. That was even when he was coherent because yeah. I think he had a lot of problems with Biden. But and, anyway. and, and that's what made, I think, myself and a lot of other people upset is why are they allowing him to do this? It's it's rather sad. First of all, it's, it's an embarrassment as as a country that this is what our leader is because our leader should be alert and aware. And and look, all these people talking about why they're voting for him because of what he was. He was this and that. And, and he, you know what? He may have been that, but today he's not. Well, and today he should be away from the spotlight taking care of his health instead of put into a position and just not to keep blabbering on, but you, the way you got to look at it is what person would you want to run your company? If you were well, working for a company, who would you want to be over your company? Well, 2020 was an interesting election because most of the reason people supported Biden was a protest vote against Trump is my belief. I also think that um, the Democrat Party itself doesn't respect Biden as much as uh, some people think because Obama couldn't stand him. Um, I, I, I've heard comments that Ob uh, Obama said about Biden before we knew he was mentally incompetent. Um, and I'm sure it's even worse now. In fact, after the debate, um, did you see uh, Jill come up to uh, uh, old Joe and and uh, said, you did you such a great did job, honey. You answered all the questions. He's like, right. I did. So we basically have a fuck me. We have a fuck me in office is what we have. You know, I, I swear. I don't know what drug they gave him. They say they didn't give him drugs this time. But I thought there's going to be drool coming out of that guy's mouth pretty soon. I mean, the guy is is incompetent. I mean, and I mean that in, in a seriously respectful terms of the fact that he should be an old folks home eating jello he, he should yeah. not be running the biggest country the greatest country in the world right. and right. and I, if i'm clayton or if i'm the prime minister or the the great dictator of china what's his name the Ding, word. Ding Zing or whatever um i mean you're looking at this going oh my gosh if he gets elected again i mean Taiwan, here i come you know i mean it, it's it's scary. Yeah. yeah it, it, and I, I don't know how he gets realistic again. I don't know how he's, uh, he's not. Just, here's the other thing to you that really, this is what yeah. me the yeah. most. These people think that Americans are stupid. We know Ooh. what we saw for 90 minutes. We know exactly what we watched for 90 minutes. We watched a man who is incompetent to hold not only a public office, but to run a company to we we saw a, a we saw what we saw. We cannot deny that. Yet this press secretary is telling us, "Oh well, he was <laughs> like that because he was traveling in Europe and was tired from that, and and he had a cold." You were home for a week at Camp David, two, and you had no cold. Two weeks. Okay. Two weeks. He practiced that debate. Stop with the BS. Let's stop with this treating us like we're stupid. Yeah, I mean. It's absolutely embarrassing how you try and spin this. And then last night it's they had him on a, uh, a, a controlled interview. Yeah. I think it was. Oh, and we're gonna have an interview. Uh, will it be lies? No. Will there be people being honest? No. no. Will uh, we're gonna have scripted questions? Oh, we're gonna absolutely. have scripted answers. And he still said, I, 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 "I'm I'm happy to be the first black pre black woman president with a black woman president." I'm like. Dude, you, you, you're you're still out and you're still out to lunch. Th this game is over. I mean, you know the one that and do they not realize we can't see the intake before they put it out there? Like we see everything that we're not idiots. This uh, the social media that is too much. Well, well it's, it's like cool. when you flip the lights on. It's kind of funny after that big debate. It's like the media is like when you flip the lights on. And in an East Coast uh, kitchen, and all of a sudden you see the cockroaches scrambling for the drain. Uh, that's what that's what the press is doing right now. About their all.
Dealing with after an event like that, you know, like I, I won't watch CNN or MSNBC because I just know it's going to just infuriate me. So, you know, put over to Fox or whatever. You know, I didn't even watch Fox, watch CNN because it was a complete meltdown. It was like oh, epic. This match did not be an office. There are all my, I'm getting text messages on this is the worst thing that could happen to our country. Like all these guys saying all this stuff on the air. And I'm like, this is the greatest. And, and then I'm thinking in my head, if Fox was smart, they would be like, Biden did an amazing job. He looked poetic. He looked, oh, so, yeah. they, you know, so they had to keep him in office. You know, if I, if I'm Trump, I'm like, Hey, <laughs> let the poor guy run. I mean, I, yeah. I, I see no problem with him running against me in the, in two months. In fact, I look forward to our second debate. And, and in the debate, there's it's supposed to be just the two of them. That's it. But we now see clips of Biden having papers with notes. We oh, see yeah. him with an earpiece in his ear. And I I think, you know, I'm pretty sure Trump was like, probably made a signal like, make this our commercial. This is, this is going to be our campaign commercial right here. Well, well what I don't, what I, made me laugh is the Democrats always are there to try to flip the script. And, uh, they're, they're trying to make Trump out to be the old codger. Uh, this was weeks before this big debate, um, because of, you know, Biden's, which by the way, before. Biden is the one that put it together, by the way. Yeah. He well, was the one that put everything together. <laughs> well, I, you know, it, it seems like it was a bad joke that no Democrat knew, but I mean, watching the D day, uh, commemoration where, uh, Biden was standing with the French president. All of a sudden you literally could see him take a dump in his diaper. And, um, he had this weird I look like that. I, I, oh, I don't know. Oh yeah. No, I, I don't, I look, people say that, but I've also been around people who have dementia and, and, right. strong. and that, that is a look of like, you, you drift, you, you, you zone off and, and that's you hunch down and zone off like you're taking a yeah. d number two. Okay. All right. right. Well, all I'm right. I'm not going to say he did that. Well, <laughs> he was escorted quickly by Jill off the stage and, and away. So, but, uh, anyway, the guy is just not qualified to be president of the United States. And, and if you vote for him, you really, I, I start to question your, um, Confidence yeah, again, as well. Would you want Seriously. that man running a company that you work for? Would, would well, you feel comfortable with that? Here's, yeah, here's, but, a, here's a question though: Who are they going to run? Because um, they they pushed out one of the actually decent qualified candidates, uh, RFK uh, RFK Junior. Um, my question is: uh, Who do they have to replace him? I mean, they they're talking governors, they're talking, but I mean, you put that. Canada at a serious disadvantage. I mean, people think, well, anybody will beat Trump besides Biden. I'm like, no, not necessarily. Uh, Trump's had a huge head start. And um, right now, I think he's actually leading in some blue states where uh, he had no chance before this election. And uh, I just don't see how the Democrats are going to pull this off. I think uh, well, the Republicans are going to win on a landslide. What's up? Because after August, they can't make a change. You know, people have yeah. voted and they have made votes. You can't just flip stuff. You, you can't do that. And what the process is, is as you look at this and as democratic people call him, what Republicans should be doing is calling for the constitutional amendment to remove him from office because he's definitely not qualified, which would then put our wonderful vice president. Oh, we're president. solid lady. Yeah. She's, she is definitely. <laughs> She's definitely but who I think should be replacing I don't replacing think she him. wants to be president. She, I don't think she wants to. I think she understands, no, that I, I'm not that. I, she's not a very intelligent person, but I think she's smart enough to realize that she would not be able to well, do I, that. I think you I got a Gavin Newsom that's sitting in the background. I think you got a Michelle Obama that's kind of sitting back into the whims of things. Um, well, they, they have until August like 29th so, yeah, to decide. Yeah. Yeah. So this isn't and over. That's why all the pushes is going on. But once that happens, it's set. There, there's no turning back. If he gets that nomination, that's it. Well, I think, I think right now there's two or three states, like Wisconsin's one of them, where there's some question on the ballot if they can even 
uh, constant in those states constitutionally, their state constitutions removed his name and put someone else. But I, 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 I think they'll figure that out. But yeah, what, once you've had that election, once you've had those primaries, yeah, like people have voted. Bam, those delegates are those the, delegates are for Biden. So yeah, he yeah. he would literally have to release the delegate at the convention right. to whoever's going to step be. down. That's well, the that's only why, way it can happen. Well, that's why Obama's been at his house. Uh, I, from what I understand, basically the Biden family's told everybody to f off so far, led by Hunter. Uh, it, yes. It's strange how oh, Hunter is yeah. now With all of a sudden Mister Family. Oh right. well, yeah. yeah, because he's facing a conviction and he might go to prison. Um, I mean, uh, isn't it convenient that for now all of a sudden, crime, by the way, for a real crime, for real crime, yeah, not some fake trumped up, pardon the expression, trumped up, but uh, bullshit that we saw in New York. So, um, hmm, yeah, the only chance the Democrats have if they actually put Trump in jail, um, which it ain't happening. I Supreme Court's already made it look like that. They, they've they already, uh, I guess the January 6th uh, uh, prosecution's in jeopardy now, too. So uh, oh, things, things are not looking good for for the Democrats right now. I mean, obviously, everybody on the Republican side fears that they'll figure a way to cheat their way back into the presidency again. But uh, I, I just don't think it's lining up very well for them. You can see real panic. Uh, in the press oh, yeah. and yeah. and with the, the Democratic Party, so uh, another That's problem great, too is yeah, it's awesome. I mean, you've got Europe too blowing up. They're tired of the woke BS that we've had to deal with the last few years, and uh, everybody's sick of it. It's like just end it. Um, and so anyway, you, politics you know, this year gonna be interesting. We fought for our we fought for our independence. We celebrated a day on the fourth of July where we separated from two percent tax from 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 England to now have ten percent tax. So well, I mean, it, it comes down to you know, and you you mentioned this one time to me privately that you're just shocked by your taxes the last couple of years, just how how little you're getting for the amount of the less money. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's almost, it's almost getting to the point where, you know, having a big paying job isn't necessarily a good thing. You're probably better off with a little lower income. Okay. Um, and, and th this is what bothers me about his reelection is every question. Okay. And first of all, this thing was set up in favor of Biden, CNN mm -hmm. moderators. I thought the moderators did a fantastic job. I honestly like for me to say that about CNN. Yeah, yeah, that was I've surprising. But all of their questions were, "You have failed because of this. What are you going to do different? You failed because of this. What are you going to do different? The economy has been in a shamble. We're paying more for our our goods and services. The border has been an absolute. Like every question was like that. This is the person we should reelect. Where every question starts out like that. Are you kidding? Well. Me? And did you see again? He he didn't do it very coherently, but he tried. He tried to blame the previous administration again. Uh, I mean, it's just like that's just that's their only argument. Well, look what Trump did. I mean, you got to stop. Yeah. I mean, Trump could go back and say, and until that year when COVID hit, you were rocking, maybe. And then I mean, you're going to blame me for this, COVID. Okay? Seriously, think about, think about 2018, right? And you had your kids were smaller. Um, when you went out to eat in 2018 with your family, right? Correct me if I'm wrong here. It costs as much to feed your family at a restaurant as you now today going out on a date with two of you does today. No, easy, easy. It's, it's uh, you cannot eat. Two people cannot go out and eat for anywhere under. Probably sixty-five to a hundred dollars. If you're going to go to a nice restaurant, take somebody out nicely, two people is going to cost over a hundred dollars. Yeah, it's it's yeah. I mean, it's, it costs not just for that. I mean, go to the grocery store lately. I mean, the grocery store is insane. Your grocery bills. I have. It's just two of us at home, and I'm spending more today in groceries than I did when I had a small family living with us. Yeah. Well, I mean, y you dump. I don't know how many trillions of dollars just into people's hands for no reason. Well, 
they called it uh, recovery. Well, what was it? It was right at, well, during COVID. It was uh, a supplement. They've never done that before in the history of this country. All of a sudden, you got $2,400 or $3,000 or $5,000. Being it, 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 and then it, not just the individual person that got the money, the, the average taxpayer, the companies that got free money, some of them didn't even want it and they still got it. Uh, the banks that got free money. I mean, we pump so much money into this system. No wonder there's inflation. And I'm sorry, but Biden's, Biden's team was cheering it on. Um, and, and encouraging Americans to take yeah. as much as they could. So do you know today, do you know what the average age of car that an American has is right now? It's probably older than they should be 12 years old. That is the average age of an American owned car right now. 12 years old I because it. they have all these restrictions on cars, elect electric, all that. Who can afford eighty to a hundred thousand dollars on a car? Yeah, no, you can't it's, do that in today's America. <laughs> no, you got a good point. Um, the other thing is, I mean, have you tried to go to a movie lately? That's why people don't go to movies anymore. I did yesterday, and it's just like absolutely crazy. I mean, they're doing everything to make it like, oh, well, we'll have these luxury chairs for you, but we're going to yeah. charge you fifteen bucks during the afternoon. And then on top of it, um, you just pay 20 Snack. bucks to eat out or 20 bucks for the food. I mean, you're popping 60 bucks for two people, um, oh. 70 bucks when it costs you it's 20. Simple. Yeah. 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 Your, I mean, your, your licorice and popcorn and soft drink are going to cost $45. I mean, it just has a domino effect on everything. And I think, I it mean, does. ultimately I'm kind of shocked. We haven't seen the unemployment. Yeah, from this, but uh, I, you know, I don't know. And then, I and then, tell me, oh, well, we're hiring a record amount. So, look, don't you can't fool me with the smokescreen because I deal in an industry that dictates what the economy does. Yeah, you know, rate is not moving, people are not buying things. That is the thing. Everything that everybody, every one of our listeners <laughs> or listener out there, you look at, I want you to look at something. Anything, Carl, that microphone came on a truck. Your headphones came on a truck. That hat came on a truck. The oh, door absolutely. behind you came on a truck. That, that wood on there for your landing back there came on a truck. The shirt that you're wearing came on a truck. The couch I'm sitting on came on. Everything comes on a truck. And if right. trucks are not moving, if freight companies are closing down, before this administration, the average amount of trucking companies that would shut down per year is 60 to 80. This last year, 80,000 truck wow. shut down. This 80, last year? 80,000 in 2023. Okay. Damn. There is a bad problem. I'm sorry. They're, hi they're hiding it. That in this well, you know they're hiding it, the media, for, for the Democrats. Yes. They're holding that water again. I mean, you feel it. It is hard getting a job right now, even though it's record employment. I'm like, really? Uh, record employment for what, uh, 12 bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour. I mean, that's, that's what a lot of companies are still paying when the, everything else has got up, you know, a hundred percent, 200%, yeah. 300%. So the, the music's going to stop somewhere, you know, um, the, 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 you know, it can't keep going without something adjusting. And unfortunately, and sadly, Trump will win the election. And of course. The real truth will come out about the economy and we're going to go through some hard times and, uh, it's going to take a little bit to clear it up and clean it up and, and reset. But, uh, yeah, this is a disaster. I mean, you know, in a way it's kind of like Biden's kind of, uh, I, I think in a way, some Democrats, they won't ever admit this, but quietly, privately, they're going, it's good. It came out because. Four more yeah. years, we'd never see another Democrat elected again because the United States would probably go through the either the worst depression ever, or we wouldn't exist because we'd be involved with some stupid nuclear war with the Russians. Thank you, Biden, because he's an idiot. So you know, well, I mean, let's be honest, and, and I think that the real patriotic Democrats, I, I think that there are some political, um, uh, I think there are politicians that are democrats that are 
pro-American. I, I really do. I think that they have good intentions. Yeah. I, I think that they understand. I don't think Biden has honestly made a decision in the last two years. I don't no, think he's made he an actual decision. I think it's been from Pelosi. I think it's been from others that are pushing his their agenda and using him as a as a puppet. Um, but I think that a lot of the Democrats that stood out and said, hey, it's time for him to step down, understand this. Like, they're tired of this. They want to have an actual government like we should have with three branches of government that are equal, that work together. And this whole divide that the press has laced in front of us with all of these different agendas, with the a certain month that we celebrated last month and their agenda throwing it on us with the war in the Ukraine, which really is not a war, with all of these things forced down our throats. The amount of money was given to the Ukraine over close to a trillion dollars, and yet we only have about $5 billion that we send to Maui to our own American citizens through a disaster. That's appalling. That's no. horrible. When we have an open border that is every day bringing in people that should not be here, that one day, and we all know it, there's going to be something bad that happens from all of these people that have come in here. Yeah, I hope yeah. they catch it, but they've already found members of ISIS and, and groups that just come walking across the border. Oh, and, 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 and people that say, well, we should have an open border. You tell me one country in this world, and I'll sit back and wait where they have an open border. There is none. Mm -hmm. There are no open borders in countries. Well, and it's kind of funny. He mentioned in the debate that the union that supports the border guards, uh, yeah. supports, supported by the, uh, border patrol. no, yeah. that was a big whopper. <laughs> that was a big whopper. Yeah. They, they posted, we under no circumstances have ever, nor will <laughs> support <laughs> Joe Biden. Oh man. I love that. Immediately. I mean, they tried to label honest Trump. Guy, people. There's your honest guy. Well, I, I, let's uh, let's uh, before we end today, let's 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 settle it. Uh, it was kind of dull. it was kind of stupid that they argued about this, but Golf. there's no way in hell Biden's going to outdrive Trump right now, even today, if they want to. You couldn't walk down the feet. stairs. You couldn't <laughs> walk down the stairs afterward. <laughs> I'm like Trump. Why are you even? humoring him i i i'm just like fine if you could find the golf tee i would i i i i'm just like you know what man. it reminded me of it reminded me of you and i because even if we were 90 years old we would still say i gotta whip your ass in basketball it would be like in a in a bed with hoses in our noses and everything like that you know i i and that competitive streak the uh, mine's got it there, mine's got it yeah I, I'll you know? admit, I've heard of another other situations where he's trying to I'll kick your ass and I'm like, yeah. all right, dude, you're funny, but okay, you probably haven't kicked anyone's ass since sixth grade, but okay, whatever. And, and then him him getting on Trump about being an alley cat, you know, and and how could you do that to another woman? Well, Joe, you literally had an affair with your current wife while your previous wife was with you still <laughs> you were doing far worse he was maybe not far worse but the same thing you're this is it was swinging on oh brother come on well hey well hey everyone we hope you had a great holiday since you'll hear this after the holiday weekend uh still still a little weekend left so uh Hopefully Brent and doesn't get arrested or, um, uh, I don't know what he has planned well, tonight. Just... So, but, uh, you'll have another adventure to tell us, I'm sure. Uh, but we look forward to, uh, yeah, we're going to be back and we're, uh, going to put some good material together for you and, uh, um, we're kind of excited. So, uh, we, you know, we don't know what's next, of course, like usual, but, uh, stay tuned and you'll find out anyway, it's been fun, Brett. Thanks again. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for watching Three Dad Bots. New episodes are released every Wednesday evening. Look for us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify Podcasts. Have a totally awesome weekend, everyone, and see you next week.